15 meeting of the Merrimack Conservation Commission. I see um, all our regular members are here, so that's good. Uh, but if anyone's watching or anyone would like to know, the Conservation Commission is looking for one volunteer full-time member and one volunteer alternate member. And if you're uh, interested in the position, you can see Becky Thompson in the town manager's office or con contact me, T. Tenhave at MerrimackNH.gov. So uh, that's all I have for announcements. Uh, we do have a few other items that we'll touch on later. Um, so anyone else have anything that they'd like to add before we get going? All right then. Uh, so with that said, uh, next on our agenda is public comment. Does the public wish to speak? Okay. Uh, then we go to appointments. We have none tonight, and so then we'll go right into our statutory work, and that first item is the dredge and fill permit for the Beals Road Bridge at the town line with Bedford. Would that be you? Yeah. For Bedford, Beals yeah, Road. Yeah, yeah. Sure, have a you seat. present something? I don't, I don't well, know yeah, so. Well, well, we're curious about the project, okay. uh, and uh, and we're glad you came because I know I know there was some back and forth, and it probably came late to you. So, yeah, sign in. All right. Yeah. No, so, it's probably but before we get too far, can you introduce yourself and then sign in my sign my sure. sheet for me? Okay. I'm Mitch Pack. I work with McFarland Johnson. I'm here on behalf of the town of Bedford. Okay. We're a consulting engineering firm. Okay. So you don't have to put your address, but put your firm name on where address sure. is. You're welcome to put up a PowerPoint if you'd like. If you think it that might will be easier if you guys want to be able to see something, yep. it, I think it would help out. Okay. Here's a thumb drive. Oh, all right. Yeah, I didn't do it. Yeah, hold on. Bedford paves that section of dirt road that goes to the dump from this area. <laughs> that thing's pretty muddy right now. Little section of dirt road. Huh? That can get paved? Not that I know of. Which, which road? You know, right beyond this bridge, if you take a right, head toward the Merrimack dump. Oh, a little okay. section of dirt road. Yeah, yeah. That's like they're always having to grade it. It's just this little section, but. It's right. in Bedford, not Merrimack, uh, I guess. Okay. Just give it a moment. Hopefully it'll look like it was going to go. Darn. So this is a new laptop for me, so we're going to have fun for a moment. Yeah, last time it just worked. So this is not. Uh, no, back. So we got a Mac here now. It's display. Yeah. Try unplugging it and plug it back in. Yeah, I just did that. Definitely working out here. Yeah, because you saw the screen flash. Yeah. It shuts my mouse off for a minute. Too. Oh, there it flicks again.
Is there a preferred resolution? It should just automatically detect it. Yeah, that's what I thought. It wants to make it really small. Okay, let's do it another way then. Like, let me restart. Just leave it for a sec. Technology, it's wonderful. What I really do need to do is spend a little more time with yeah, my new computer. Never so. Matt could probably drive this, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't tell anyone I'm a software engineer, okay? <laughs> it seems like it's in the right, because it's not in the normal mode. Interesting. And normally it fills the whole retina screen, screen and everything, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Displays, right? Or do you have a quick button? Command. Yeah, I mean, the last couple of times it just worked. It says it's. Switched it there, no. Interesting. Yeah. It knows it's there. What if you go ahead? ahead. Yes, yeah, even it adjusts back. Okay, so <coughs> let's get it to be big enough. Or we want to just live with that. Okay. Leave Take it. what we got, right? <laughs> Uh, no. It might be the, the free space folder, the other folder there. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Do you have a little clicker that I can switch with, or should I just let you know when to switch it? Um, yeah, let's get it to open first. I could just give you the whole Mac if you wanted. Do you? <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't matter. Might be easier here. Bring it around. Okay. I showed it where it was. It didn't start. <laughs> so, yeah, what happened to it? Mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten a thousand today. Unless actually, do you have to open it as a PDF possibly? Maybe it's not even. Is it a, is it a PDF? M maybe that's how it, it, they uh, turn a PowerPoint to a PDF possibly. Okay. That's, 
Maybe right. that's what our problem so, was. Oh, it says it's a PowerPoint. Oh, it doesn't? Yeah. Okay. What if you try that open with there's one other in one in there that looks familiar? Tim, if you find these PowerPoints before, this is the first time this guy. Point, you have a window saying, like, oh. click accept, and you just can't see it because the screen's too small. Right, yeah. You're right, the screen is small. Move that window around. Yeah. Grab the top bar and start dragging it around a little. Right. Exactly. Up the next one down. Right there. Is there it is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, have you guys been discussing any of the work that was done on between John Lane and the trees that were taken down tonight at all? Um, it's not on the agenda, but we oh, be. No, it's a, okay, I'm just curious if you were. I just wanted to hear what you guys were saying. That's all. Right. Um, you're welcome to weigh in at, towards the end of our meeting if you'd like. Okay. Yep. I'll move to my wife then. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now let's make it big. Put it in another window, and I'm not seeing it now. Yeah, I do have a thing for down one. Right here, right? No, no, right, right under that, right under the box. I just down, grab the window itself. Yeah, that's gonna minimize it. Just make sure it's it around a little bit. Now there's, uh, it's there's something going on that I can't see. Doesn't work anymore. No, it's not. This is gonna be an idea. Let's <laughs> see. Oh, when they're going, cut it out. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <coughs> there we go. No, I can just hit the arrow, I'm assuming? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, thanks. All right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <coughs> Again, I'm Mitch Pack from McFarland Johnson. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, I'm going to cover some environmental aspects. But somebody from our company that does the environmental didn't come with me, but I, I know enough to fill you guys in at least. So the project location, it's, it's Fields Road um, at the Babusik Brook, which is on the town line of Bedford and Merrimack. Uh, there's a rather large drain area to this bridge which is 23.3 square miles, which makes it a tier three stream. Mm -hmm. A summary of the project, it's replacing the, the structure over Babusik Brook. Uh, it's a state aid project where the state's funding 80% of the cost and 20% from the municipalities or municipality, depending how that all pans out. Uh, the existing bridge now is, has a 20 foot wide span cast in place concrete deck slab. So the superstructure is concrete and it's on top of mortal rubble walls, which is a, a need for the replacement there. It's starting to fail and there's some settling and our company has actually been hired to go out and measure the settlement over time. Mm -hmm. um, again, existing is 20 foot wide. Uh, it was constructed in 1928 and then the superstructure, which is the concrete I mentioned was replaced following that in 1984. A couple other reasons for the project other than that it's failing as there's a less than desirable roadway geometry, the horizontal and the vertical curve don't meet current standards. Uh, the hydraulic opening is smaller than it should be, which is creating flooding upstream of the structure. Um, and it's, like I said, it's, uh, it's deficient uh, on the uh, red br the bridge red list program and I believe it went from a six to a four during Hurricane Irene. <clears throat> this is looking downstream from the bridge. Uh, the existing bank width is 56 feet wide. Uh, if you look in the New Hampshire crossing guidelines it calls for uh, a span of 69 feet which uh, you can imagine what, what that would look like um, when it's existing 20 feet right now. Uh, and then the, the other the other things there, I, there that's environmental uh, <laughs> river stuff. I'm not sure what it means, but uh, sinuosity 1.2 and depth ratio 14, entrenchment 1.9. And feel free to ask questions as I go if you yeah. have something to, if you want to bring up. Again, the existing bridge this is a view looking downstream towards Merrimack. The, the you can see the mortal 
rubble walls right there that are built out of stone um, with a 20 foot wide span. So that opening is going to be 36 feet? Is Correct. Yeah. Propo the proposed opening is 36, th 36 by 36 as well. The, mm -hmm. the street's going to be widened to, uh, proposed to be widened to allow for pedestrians to travel on the road safer and for snow storage in the winter. Okay. So the existing rubble then would go away? Exactly. And, and then the precast would go in on each side, the yeah, three-sided so, cast? Yeah, it's almost, if you picture, it would be a bridge spanning the existing bridge. So a lot of the work would be out of the wetlands because it's going to be a wider opening now. Mm -hmm. So it would be new precast structure, which I'll show you in a couple yep. of minutes here. Uh, yep, here we are. The preferred alternative, we, we looked at a few alternatives during the study phase. Uh, the preferred alternative is a precast rigid frame, which is 36, as we just said, by eight feet vertical. Um, the advantages to that over the, uh, the alternatives I'm gonna show you are construction costs, maintenance, and durability. Um, and the overall opening will decrease the 100-year flood upstream by almost four feet. So you can imagine there's some, it's backing up pretty good because of the existing opening. Mm -hmm. Natural stream bed material, we're proposing to, to reconstruct the bridge without having to replace the material in the center of the channel right now to try to leave it at its natural state. And that's a benefit for animal passage and, and impacts. Um, estimated construction costs at our preliminary stages where we are right now, 740,000. Here's a cross section of looking through the proposed bridge. That's the precast arc structure that you see there uh, with the center channel remaining existing and class B riprap to protect scour uh, along the new abutments of the bridge. And then those are topped with natural stream bed material where the larger stone had to get constructed. Um, yeah, not, not a lot more to look at there unless you want to get into bridge detail, but uh, that's the cross section. Um, here was another alternative which would have met the stream guidelines of the 69 foot span. And uh, as you can see, they would be precast next beams that would have to come in on large trucks. And uh, the, the construction cost is significantly higher of 1.2 million to meet that to meet that requirement. And it would obviously take a, a longer amount of time and it would require bridge joints, which tend to be a maintenance, more of a maintenance problem than the precast structure. Mm -hmm. Wh who says yes to the, you know, 69 is what they recommend. Who says, okay, yeah, we can do it? It's, it would go through when we're, we're doing the permitting. It's something that they ask for, but then you, you weigh versus the construction costs. And, you know, a lot of the times, the, the way they determine this is you, you find what the bank width is, which... If you, if you could see the plan, it, it funnels from, I think I said 50-something down to the 20-foot. So right now it's only 20 feet at the bridge, so to open the whole river up to that alternate right. width, yeah. Well, I said, but who, who is that DES that says, oh, okay, yeah, you can... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, what is that got right in front of me? Yeah, we, we, we go through iterations. We have pre-application meetings with them where we discuss all these matters and... All right, so so the the reduced width is is something they they've already approved. Yeah, we've yep, we've had meetings where we've we've shared that and they're, they're on board. Well, you said it's proposed thirty six inch or thirty six foot right span. Now, is that that that's not going to change unless there's some other? Yeah, I don't see why impact. why it would change as far as the permitting when we've had upfront meetings to discuss that matter. <clears throat> the other thing that might be at play is the. Uh, is the amount of state bridge aid available now is significantly less than it has been. Right. So when he's looking at this span and take 80% of that mm -hmm. as the state share, that takes a, they've only got $7 million. Right. So you're taking, what, uh, a tenth or more of what they've got out of that thing, whereas if he does the smaller one, then he's down to uh, half a million, 600,000. Yeah, seven. For the, uh, for that, so it, 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 gives them right. they can do more projects yeah. and right. it's still better than what it was right it, it, well, I, just, it, I was more yeah. of a curiosity yeah. I mean, is what, yeah. you know is that is that part of what is being proposed is we're going to do you know 36 versus 60 or is it is that already yeah that it, already decided? that's already we've already gone through that in the study phase and we we do submit to nhdot for to see our alternatives and our preferred alternative and then they would 
then bless it. Okay. So another uh, sure. looking in the NHDS uh, permit that you've attached here, mm -hmm. uh, in number one it says uh, the current requirement is 24 feet. No, but that's for the top deck. Oh, that's for the yeah. That's for the road. width of oh, the road. Oh, yeah. I, I guess I, I don't have yeah, that. Yeah, the real the rear width. Yeah, if it's yeah, the road road width is usually gotcha. twelve and twelve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which I, I think I mentioned earlier, we're proposing to make wider for safety mm -hmm. and for pedestrians. There's a lot of movements to try to have wider shoulders for bicycles and people walking across. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Here's a few photos. This is looking the opposite direction, facing upstream towards Bedford. This is on the bridge looking upstream. You can see the channel significantly wider. And that's looking at the abutment, which the south abutment and the south <coughs> east corner is where the settlement is occurring the most. This is looking at the wetland impacts that will be a result of the bridge construction. There's permanent channel impact of uh, 1,757 uh, 1, square feet, and then it's also measured linearly along the channel, which is 166. Permanent bank impacts, 1,297 square feet, 193 linear feet. Temporary channel, 3,637 with 136 linear feet, and temporary bank, 2,550 with 91 linear feet. Which so is a, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to ask questions about your picture. That's all. So, sure. so you're picking up some water off of Beals Road, and then you're, and then you're yes pulling it out. That is existing. That's what I thought. Okay. Closed system that is on that on that road right now. We're just replacing it for the fact that we're digging up there now. Might as well put newer infrastructure under the ground. It's yeah. okay. It shouldn't be anything different than what was already there. All right. So looking at that picture, where's the town line? Right there. Like okay. This, which is yeah. somewhat odd because it's not through the center. It's, it's through this yep. southeast corner of the bridge. And then the impact is the top left-hand corner of the picture. Then the impact. The, the yeah. Wetland impact. Or yeah. Well. Okay. All, well, I all guess it's all throughout, is, right? Yeah. All, it's all the, the hatching. hatching. Gotcha. To, right. To okay. Yeah. The top of bank. And yeah. Okay. So the, the environmental group in our office did, did, did their work and determined there's no rare species. There's a, a forwarded, forwarded flood, flood plain uh, that does not receive any impacts. We're just downstream of that area. Um, I mentioned earlier we plan to try to keep the channel in place in the center, which is another uh, benefit to leaving the natural stream bed for the animal crossing. Uh, all matting that we are proposing to use for slope stabilization is wildlife friendly, and that's usually so that snakes and salamanders and various uh, wildlife cannot get trapped in it, mm -hmm. which is a, it's common. And I believe there's a yeah wood turtle in this area, which is something to pay attention to. And, and uh, speaking of the wood turtle and the catch basins, we also propose to not have sumps, what we which we typically would in the bottom of the structure, because uh, it was a New Hampshire Fishing Game recommended not doing that so if they fall in they can then get back out. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, the other the other aspect uh, for the turtles is curbing along the road. We are not having curbing because it's another issue as they try to travel up over the road. They can't get themselves up over the curb. So those were some, some things asked of us and we're yeah. moving forward with that. The protected shoreline permit, we've submitted that, and that is in, uh, in their hands. Um, there's no increase in base flood elevation for the f regulatory floodway. There's no change in flood storage capacity due to the project. And the water quality, there, there is a slight increase of impervious. It's fairly insignificant. Um, but uh, overall, we don't, we don't have a significant uh, impairment to, to water quality. It's, it's generally the same condition that was there, just kind of shifted and moved around slightly and along with the historic resources uh, they have no real concerns with this project anticipated benefits 
improved aquatic and wildlife passage. There will be a wider opening, better passage for the animals to get through. Again, there's no curbing, as we mentioned, and protection in the catch basins. Due to opening up the channel, there'll be reduced velocities, which create less scour, less erosion, less sediment in the river. Um, and the permanent impacts are generally within the same footprint. They are getting larger, but due to the fact that they're getting larger, that's outside of the wetland or outside of the stream, this channel. Um, yeah, and overall safety improvements, as, as I mentioned, the horizontal and vertical curves will provide better sight distance for vehicles and the wider shoulders will give a safer way for people to travel through the area. That's, uh, that's all I got. Questions, anyone? Any thoughts of fertilizer use or anything like that when? Uh, it's on there. Yeah. Have you hit the light? Yeah. You want to bring up the exact spot? Yeah, if you, if, if you, if you get the plan you there in front of you. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't bring the, uh, the permit with me. Is that what you're looking at? Is the actual permit or the plan? I'm looking at the plan. The wetland impact yeah, plan. Okay. Page eight. Sure. <coughs> page eight. Oh, erosion control notes. Um, yeah. So on the, on the on the first one in that first section on uh, item number seven, mm -hmm. uh, you've made a. Well, there's a couple places in here, but. You make comments to fertilized, you know, fertilizing the area for reseeding. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if you're adding new soil, uh, new topsoil, that you, that's what we typically ask people to do is test the soil first. Okay. To see if you even need fertilizer. Oh, okay. Um, well, obviously, because of your proximity to the, st the streams, we don't right. want to be washing phosphates and nitrates yeah, into the. The point is to try to keep that. Right. Keep that as clean. Yeah. So. Uh, we, we're asking folks when when they're in that zone to just test the soil first. If you don't even need to use fertilizer, you may be saving yourself some money there. Right. Uh, and the UNH does the soil testing. It's fairly cheap. Right. And it's uh, now is that something usually in the d design plans or during construction, or it's probably something you want you want to get on the plan so that we yeah. we try to specify it in the plans. Yeah. I mean, we have uh, you've got you know that off the top of your head. You've yes. got our nice little so so, so our common spiel for projects is is we first we ask people to test before they decide to use it okay. and, and if they need to use fertilizer then we prefer that they use a slow release nitrogen low uh -huh. phosphate but in this case where you're right next to the actual uh, stream bed mm -hmm. um, and usually we ask for no phosphate in the mm -hmm. fertilizer um, yep. so yeah it, that, that's something I'm assuming will be in the notes when we can look at number 11 yeah the mulching hay or straw Yes. There's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of notes in here about hay or straw, too. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. also something we try to stay away from hay. Yep. We want just the non seeded straw for mulching. Right. Yeah. So, we, uh, if you could scratch the, scratch the comments of hay and hay. Ha yeah. have it stick to straw. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, if not, we'll have interesting little granules growing in downstream in Merrimack somewhere gotcha. along the riverbed. Yeah. So. Note 11. Yeah. So it is. It is actually in there in a couple different places okay. where you s where it speaks to mulching. It's that the hay or straw, hay or straw. Okay. So it might be a. So we'll just scan the whole sheet. Yeah, if, you, if you could, please. Yeah. So we have further downstream in Babusik Brook. We have issues along the 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 stream bed with, of invasive spe species, mm -hmm. in particular the Japanese knotweed. Oh, yeah. And I... <laughs> you know that stuff. <laughs> you know that stuff. <laughs> Backyard, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so we would, we would like to request that before there's any sort of excavation type work that there's a quick look for invasives so and then, pro right, then yeah. proper control of those invasives before they're right. disturbed. Mm -hmm. uh, to include yep. something along those terms. Yeah. Base. When is this proposed to start? No, I can't answer this. It's not, it wouldn't, I don't, it wouldn't be this construction season, if mm -hmm. anything, 2016, but the uh, town of Bedford's still trying to work yep, that no, out. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. 
you just you, you you make some you know winter considerations, and I was just starting to wonder if they're trying going to try to get this into the frozen season. Yeah, th th to be honest with you, this sheet here is sort of a template. Yeah, yeah. It's for the most part, it is. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we modify it to for a quest that you're mentioning here. For the most part, we. Yeah, we're used to seeing the these these kinds of sheets on projects. We see them all the time, yeah, so yeah. you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> change the template oh. <laughs> well so so people who do projects in Merrimack are getting used to us so they already right. know <laughs> yeah <laughs> well just for the ER, DES permits uh, there's certain things that change over time and then we yeah. redevelop these to make sure we have what they they'd yeah. like to see yeah. <coughs> town specific I guess it all depends on right so being close so close to Merrimack I'm assuming there'll be some sort of coordination with the town right I suspect yeah right yeah. That's I'm not sure how far. I mean, there's been communication, but as far as result, I don't. <laughs> right. I, I did have a quick exchange through our folks downstairs right. with the uh, chief, with the engineer, Kyle. Uh, Kyle. Yep. And Kyle um, didn't raise any concerns about the methods or anything being used. Oh. Okay. He thought it was pretty standard. So I think right. we I think we have a bridge like this in town now, don't we? Is that the one at the end of Joppa Road, maybe? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, it might be something similar. Yeah. Yeah, the span was opened up a bit, mm -hmm. and uh, it was the roadway was made wider, and that was the original intent of the project yeah. to make it wider, mm -hmm. so that the tractor trailers from the transfer station could pass through there without yeah. scraping paint off cars on the way by. Yeah, I, I may be wrong, but I know there was a lot of precast work down there. Plus, they did precast for a good way. These little things they draw right into the ground in order to keep because the road bed is so much higher than the, the mm -hmm. stream bed, and the stream kind of follows along by the road for a little while. But okay. yeah, but yeah, it's probably a, probably going to be a similar um, process for the um, McGar Bridge. McGar yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that project already a few months back. So. Yeah. yeah. Which is sort of interesting because we're opening that one up wider because of the right. flood implications. Yeah, I know. no fault. What was the requirements again? The so, so that typically in, in in a stream bed situation, we're looking for for no phosphate, yep. slow release nitrogen. Okay. If needed. At all. If, if needed. needed yeah. yeah. No phosphate, slow release nitrogen. Yeah. So, so for your information, I um, I did address a letter to uh, to DES and let them know that we were taking a look at the project mm -hmm. um, and asked them for a few extra days because I think I missed the 14-day window that we have by RSA. Oh, really? But I figured the span of this project and it taking months and months probably didn't matter a few days anyway. So probably not. So we'll pr what I'll probably do then is take our comments that we arrived here tonight and uh, and just put them in the letter back. Perfect. So that they have it. Too. Yeah, yeah. So. Yep. And that's to, uh, oh, now I'm going to get myself in trouble. That's to even and, um, yeah. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? No, you look pretty straightforward, yep. but, but it's good. Uh, also, our meetings are videotaped, so now that mm -hmm. folks in town, if they're curious or if right. they were wondering or, well, I can always refer them back to this meeting and right. they could get the details on it. So it's a little bit of educational as well. Good. So, yeah. for, so I'm glad that you did come out and yeah. bring a presentation. Yeah, so. so anyone have anything else? No. That's All right. Straightforward. So, so to DES, I'll let them know our preference is to test before fertilizing, straw only, and then, um, and of course with the fertilizer, the, the no phosphate, slow release nitrogen, and then to identify and properly control any invasives before. So, all right. Yeah. Can I put my email on here for the minutes or anything along? I, I can. Sh I can be sure you have all that information if you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you want to. If yeah, you want to add your I'll email. Yep. Yeah.
our minutes, I mean, our meetings, they're taped. They're also on streaming video off the Merrimack TV link, too. Oh, yeah. So you could even it's refer back. Just to go back and look. Yeah. 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 Plus, the minutes are posted online. They're usually up for about a year, so. <laughs> and you could always request them because it's public. Okay. So. Um, anything else? I do not. All right. Great. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Put your uh, phone address. Yeah. So, and uh, f for Don, our minutes taker, we started at 6.34 p.m. So, she does the minutes off the video as well. I am, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you could just pull it. with me today. So that takes care of the permit. Next on our agenda is 526 Danube Highway, LLC. Eric Mitchell. I'm here on behalf of the owner, and I have a powerless point. <laughs> well, my leg's broken there. I got a rubber band on it, but I took care of it. I could just show you on the big screen what we're doing, if that's okay. And then I yeah. can uh, go over some specifics with you as you may have. Uh, this set of plans is a set that we had developed to go to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. The property is in the Commercial 2 zone. The proposal uh, was for a building back through here, about 30,000 square feet. And in addition to the existing building uh, on the property of about 11 thousand square feet. Uh, it is at 626 Daniel Webster Highway and it's the vault uh, motor storage facility used to be Xyla's. Everyone knows where we're talking about. Mm -hmm. This was the old Xyla's building here. Uh, what is proposed or what was proposed before the zoning board is this was going to be an additional building, separate building, and a company called Airmax was going to lease that. Uh, within the last week or so they've decided not to lease it but we're still going to move ahead with building plans. That's what the variance was for because it was light manufacturing and uh, was not uh, permitted by right within the zone. Uh, since last week, uh, we've looked at the building out back to be used for the same use as the front, the motor vehicle storage, which is primarily um, RV trailers and boats uh, stored there for the, generally for the winter time. Uh, what the owner wants to do instead of adding to the building here, is really to take this addition and just make this building bigger for a space in between. So it would still be about 40,000 square feet of new building added to the site. The difference from what uh, is shown on these plans 
is that it would be all used for motor uh, vehicle RV uh, storage in, inside as opposed to the Air Max that was there before. Right, so you said the addition is now just going to be joined to the new building? We're actually going to, they're not going to be joined. This addition of 11,000 square feet is actually going to be, the back building would be made bigger. Bigger, okay. And we'd have the, this would now be the big building, and this here would be uh, parking or whatever in between. So there'd be a separation between the two. Okay. So this is just being built onto that. Right. Uh, the property itself is in the aquifer zone entirely and the wellhead uh, protection district comes about through here that's through scale from the where the wells are uh, the proposals that we have through here would be served the building would be serviced by municipal uh, water and sewer uh, the area in the front that's in the wellhead protection area is very limited improvements our sewer tie-in is down through here so is the water so we would have an Improvements running in the corner here up to the back building. Currently, there's a access across through here. We have proposed a, a one-way access there about uh, 12 feet wide. Uh, we have met with the planning uh, commu uh, community development staff at a meeting and then also met with the department heads at a separate meeting and uh, fire had requested to have a wider access there. So this would be a wider access in through here just to circulate. We expect the main access to be to the building to the rear to be back and forth through here. Uh, it may be circulate back out, but any cars or anything that comes in will come in down on that side. So we do have some uh, improvements, uh, mainly regrading and uh, uh, paving or the use of a, uh, right now the surface that has been used out there, it's paved in the front, but the area in the back is uh, crushed asphalt, which still has the, the base on it for the gravels. Uh, but that base is on top. It's not, it's not impervious. It's not pervious pavement, but it is a little bit different than the actual paved uh, hard material. Uh, so within the wellhead protection, we have some improvements for access points and utilities in the back of the building, uh, back of the lot, which is in the uh, aquifer zone. We do have a proposed detention basin in the back, which will collect our stormwater and infiltrate. And I think that's probably sheet number four in your set. Has the grading on it. The site is very flat in terms of uh, a gradient. Uh, as an example, this is elevation 182 here, 180 at the street, and up back through here. Um, uh, this is uh, 178 down through the building here. We propose to uh, take the stormwater and go down into an infiltration basin on the top. This is a slope going down into the wetland in the back, which we don't expect to uh, alter. Uh, there's also a floodplain which comes right up to the back here. Uh, this is uh, some backflow from when the uh, highway is put in, sort of cut it off, but it still has a floodplain uh, component to it, so it can back up through here and raise up, but we're not going to be within the flood zone or the wetlands with any of our uh, proposed improvements. Uh, because the site is uh, fairly flat, the soils are very uh, sandy. Uh, there is not a whole lot of uh, uh, material that needs to be pushed around or altered. Um, and I, we're, we're here to uh, get input from the commission on being both in the wellhead protection district and the aquifer district. And, uh, more specifically, any information that you're going to need in our stormwater management plan or additions to it uh, that you uh, want us to have uh, on the project. We have not submitted to the planning board yet. We're getting ready to until the building shape changed, uh, but we'll be submitting that in a few weeks to the planning board. This is going to be purely storage only. There's no, uh, presumably, no maintenance or anything activity? No. Uh, there's no, would be no maintenance, storage of the, um, just the RVs uh, and the boats inside. Um, and that's the use that's going to be there now. We would expect that if the use did change, say if there was some office space which is permitted or whatever, we'd have to come back for a change of use. Right now, the um, amount of employees on site is only two or three at a time because it's not uh, 
it's not self-storage. You don't come get your vehicle and take it out. It's almost by appointment that they go in, take it out, and bring it out to you. So uh, there's very little uh, car traffic coming back and forth. The main employees there are to get vehicles when they need to. Some are stacked inside, so you couldn't just go drive yours out anyway. You'd have to move another one out of the way to get the vehicle out. Uh, so there would be limited uh, living employees as well. So is there any outflow from the catch basin? The outflow, um, there are no catch basins on site that outflow onto the site now, but around the building we would pick up the drainage from the roof on the proposed building and bring that into the uh, infiltration basin in the back. Okay, but, and, but the basin is... The, the basin in the back, there's nothing coming out of it, right? It would be an emergency um, riprap okay. spillway, only in case it filled up so it wouldn't erode the side. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not proposed to have a, uh, a piped uh, outlet into the, um, into the, the wetland. In the there. back, yeah. Okay. Similar to what you heard previously, uh, sheet nine speaks about fertilizers. Yes. Uh, you want testing done ahead of time? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I didn't see any amounts. Some of the plans we see, the standard print is like 10, 10, 10, or something like that. I didn't see any of that on the, on the prints. But uh, in this situation, uh, we wouldn't be opposed, I don't think, opposed to phosphate use. Right, I, we would do whatever the commission wants us to. Yeah, uh, right. The site itself isn't, it's not a park, you know, right, so right, right. as long as it's uh, uh, protected and not erodible afterwards, it yeah. doesn't matter what the surface treatment is. Okay, yeah, and, and it's, so, so, um, so we would suggest that you test before use of fertilizers, and then if you need to, then use a slow-release nitrogen, low phosphate. Let's follow that up too. On the, you've you've got the same caveats in about hay and straw. So if you could, uh, hay's no good anymore. Hay's no good. <laughs> if you could strike that and stick to straw, that would be good. I believe there's also a comment that came up during uh, staff uh, meeting about uh, uh, Green Snow Pro certification. Yeah, yeah. Snow storage and screen snow. Right. It doesn't. It hadn't made it onto these plans yet, but we would do that. Uh, so that um, any snow uh, removal and treatment would be by certified people to do that. Okay, good. Where, where do you have some snow storage proposed? I think the majority of the snow storage, uh, if we have it, would probably be in the infiltration basin itself. Uh, we do have, uh, some of it would be plowed along the edges. The area is going around the building, which is gonna be a driveway. Fire did ask us to make these a little bit wider as well. These would be plowed just like a regular road. It wouldn't be picked up uh, here. Uh, any snow in the back of the building would probably go into the basin, but we do have areas on the side up through here. If there's additional snow, an area on the side of the building down through here. This is paved now, but it's not. The primary use of this is just the farmer's market in the summertime because it's paved. Right. Um, and one other thing I forget to mention is that we've been asked to show a sidewalk, which is this is paved up to here. Uh, so we'll put a sidewalk on our property to here, and it's lawn in here. We'll continue the sidewalk out to here on our property. So in the future, it could be connected. Don't know when that's going to be, uh, but that would be there as well. <coughs> as far as activity activity during the wintertime, is there even – I can't imagine there's going to be a lot of activity in the wintertime. No, the only – the only activity probably would be if someone decided to take a vacation with their motorhome and was going to head south with it. Okay. Um, and that would be about it because all the boat storage would be in there for good. And most of the motorhomes are, are there um, all the time. Right, I so mean, most of the boats are there all the time. So even during the winter, there's probably not going to be a lot of snow melt and need for a lot of snow melt just spread. Correct. It will just be kept open for uh, fire and yeah. uh, security. Mostly sand would be used for... Any kind of traction. Yes. Do you have any dumpster locations or anything like that on the site? I don't know if they're on the site. Um, 
And I don't know that it shows on the site. Yeah, I didn't come up. I, I believe they're, if they're there, they're in the general area here, and we'll have to designate those. This is the office currently in this area right here uh, for the facility. Um, so we'll look at a dumpster location. If you have any recommendations, uh, we can look at that. But it would be in the front of the property as opposed to out back closer to the wetlands. Yeah. And because of the nature of the building, there's limited um, <coughs> need for the dumpster use. It's really there just for the, uh, the couple employees that are there during the day uh, to, to use. There's not any packing or unpacking or uh, cardboard or anything, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was just concerned to make sure that it wasn't all the way in the back of the building. Uh, it would not be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so the stormwater management plan, Typically, w when we see these plans, we see the f that the modeling has been done of the water and stuff like that. I yep. didn't find that verbiage in here. It's not in here yet uh, because we were still working through the process with the zoning board and going to staff. Mm -hmm. We haven't actually done the, we've done preliminary modeling for pre and post, but it's not a final model, which we need to submit to the town for our right. site plan. But this is also going to go to AOT for alteration of terrain because we're just over the 100,000 uh, limit. Yep. So this would be go to them as well. So that all that will be in a uh, format um, soon. Okay. Once the building stops changing shape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and you, you mentioned earlier you'll be using roof drains and collecting that water. Yes. Right. Yep. covers all the notes that I yep. had. So, anyone have anything else they want to add? All right, so when I draft a letter to the planning board with our recommendation, I'll speak to the, um, to the fertilizer test and, and low phosphates, low release nitrogen, green snow post certified, removal of hay from the, from the plants, uh, and then what I'll do which is, I know they typically do, but you know, just to have someone review the the model, the yes, and, and make sure that it's appropriate. So, yep. we'll do that. Yeah. Anyone have anything else? All right then. I think okay. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. You did sign in for me too, right? Yes, okay. I did. Great. I'll put my email down too, in case you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, so that takes us to old business. Uh, first item under old business is the NED pipeline. And, uh, let me just kind of get organized here for a second. So, I see you've been sending us updates that you see that are posted to, to FERC. Yes, yes. I, I appreciate them. Oh, good, good. I'm assuming there's quite a bit more going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it comes in spurts, too. Yeah. Like you said, a lot sometimes. of bandwidth. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, right. <laughs> All right. And I did get a login for the union leader. You did? Yes. Oh, okay. excellent. So All right. Good. Read that. Now, is it yours or is it? Mm -mm. It's the town's. It's the town's? Yeah, so I mean, I'll just use it in, in a realm, you know, okay. right. until the pipeline is okay. hopefully discontinued. <laughs> Do they have anything for the telegraph? She said she thought that you didn't need a login for the Telegraph. And I, I haven't you really. Do. You, you do need one? Okay. I can ask her again then. 
Yeah, yeah, because the telegraph's even more restrictive than the union leader. Union leader will give you three views and then they cut you off. Yeah, I noticed that. Okay, I've been um, getting that, so. So. Okay, I'll check back later then. Okay. All right. Uh, so after our last meeting, we talked about probably becoming more proactive and sending more input to FERC. Has anyone thought about some of the items they'd like to consider? Forwarding? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> from, from the commission's perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, you know, my concern is is that uh, scoping meetings are are next, right? Yeah. And the timing of them, I wonder what it's going to be like. Whether it's going to be before the June drop, the next drop from Kinder Morgan, or whether it's going to be after the June drop because the, the one plus gigabyte of data they dropped on us in March, uh, uh, I thought it was very hilarious the post that you put forward, but I found it to be very true. It's full of TBD still. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the stuff from June f in June will also be full of TBDs. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have to do that, any, any of that stuff until they make their final application for their permit. And so the other the other piece is that, as we said at the last meeting, um, a lot of the scoping um, is going to be framed by what they've gotten so far or up until the time that they're going to do the scoping meeting. That's how they're going to probably, what they're going to do to determine um, the scope of what they're going to do uh, and what they're going to look at. So, you know, it's... Uh, that's another consideration uh, when you're when we're submitting information to them is what we're going to give because if nobody says anything about anything check that one off we don't have to deal with it we won't deal with it you know because nobody brought it up so anyway that's yep. that's just another consideration uh, in all of this okay so to the extent that you've got your um, uh, what were all those studies that you guys have done over the last five or six years of wildlife? Well, actually, those were done even longer ago. But yeah. yeah. Right. So we've got the master plan, the definitive plan, the ecological and forestry plan. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that material is already electronic and it could already be submitted. And <coughs> with, the, with the caveat that, you know, we're, uh, you know, for the areas that we're dealing with, on, uh, you know, those are under review at the present time and it would be more. Um, up-to-date and definitive information regarding any changes that have occurred since these studies were done so you know that would be uh, that would be another you know something that you've already got in hand right that's already available and can easily be transmitted to them electronically okay yeah that makes sense so um, we have a forestry plan also for Gilmore Hill Memorial Forest but that's very weak in nature it was really it's, it's a true forestry plan this is how many board feet you have and stuff like that but but I guess we could start submitting all those plans then or documents that sound like something yeah. you want me to st start pursuing update them prior to submitting them but yeah it's gonna be better than nothing Right. Well, considering that Kinder Morgan's using 1986 yeah. data, you know, <laughs> data. Doesn't mean I want to. I understand <laughs> that, okay? But, I mean, you know, our, right. our stuff is at least better than that, or yeah. more recent, let's put it that way. The work that you've done before this is more recent than that, and so, you know, it, it, it gives them, you know, the, the environmental consultant, it gives them a little bit more insight as to what's in there and what we've done, and, yeah. you know, compared to the other towns further west of us, you know, uh, we're probably way ahead of them in, in this type of information. So, well, maybe we're not, but at least in the the, 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 the scope of what we've done or what the, what the Conservation Commission has done is probably much broader because there's a lot more of it here than it is than the, there might be further west. Uh, you know, from what I've seen, they're, they've done, you know, very credible work out there in their Conservation Commissions. Uh, so... You know, all of that would add together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's. I guess those documents are easy to send. 
probably best to put a cover letter for each one of them so they know exactly what they're getting. So some of the, even if you look in at some of the pictures that they've submitted, I mean, they're old. I mean, the Google Earth pictures, but they're old. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they show the pipeline going over by the mall, and the mall's not there. Right. So, I mean, are, are items like that, you know, here's, here's a true representation of the impact in this area versus what they've been, what's been submitted. I mean, is that stuff that we should be submitting to, or is that? Well, they're doing, the biggest complaints about surveyors being on their property seems to re be revolving around surveyors for the aerial photography because they're going to fly the whole route to get the most recent information that they can. So, you know, at some point, <coughs> FERC is going to want something newer than what they've got that shows as clearly as possible what's on the ground at the present time because uh, they don't want to get caught short either um, when they're dealing with this and somebody's saying, hey, you don't have, you know, this doesn't show you that this is there. So that that's, you know, I'm sure that that's part of the reason they're going to do the aerial aerial photography flights is so that they've got that information already in hand and and it's part of it, it could be part of their submission or part of this information that's available so you know, it's just you know so I mean if we could send that stuff in too I mean it doesn't matter okay. I was just curious I mean it just seems that it's you know a lot of, if, you, if you're obviously that's a lot of data there and you're, you're digging through it I mean it, those there's the holes and there's holes that are seemingly admitted over areas that have greater impact than what they're, you know, leading you to believe. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. You know, those are uh, those are all the kinds of things. Look, here's 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 what's truly being impacted in that area. That's TBD. Seems like some of those things you would think they would update that information. You know, they would have the ability to be able to, to do that. Yeah, I, I found it more difficult to go back and get old aerial shots than to go get the newest stuff. <laughs> 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 I, I know yeah, it's it's a yeah. When you go back and look through the historical yeah. flight, you know, f historical flights that they've done, uh, yeah, you got to really, you, 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 yeah, it's it's a lot tougher. Yeah. So uh, okay, if it's okay. Yeah. Well. Let's put it this way: whatever, whatever we send in ain't gonna hurt. Right. 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 You know, and it may be repetitive, it may be, you know, uh, boring, uh, but the fact of the matter is, is you know, they can't say they didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I thought we should do a submittal that speaks to the fact that we're in the process of doing our own study, and that these are the things we're looking at. But that information won't be available until you know, such and such a time. Right. And we will send that to them. Right. <coughs> yeah, it's a, it'll end up, it's a public document, so there's no reason why we can't, so, yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things that you would, you would, depending on timing, prepare for the, um, the full hearing. Yeah. process after the, f the application after they've accepted the application you know that would be submitted as part of that process okay we've gone through all this stuff here's what we found here's the other things that we found mm -hmm. yeah well most of the studies so far are, are online too if anyone wants to go find them so um, okay uh, so as you highlighted at our last meeting, they technically probably only have to do one scoping meeting in the county of Hillsborough. Yes. Which could end up, you know, I mean, that could be a two-day meeting. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> but we know it won't be. <laughs> At least the odds are against it, them running a meeting that's going to go that long. So. And there have been requests coming in to FERC to hold multiple meetings. I mean, I'm not forwarding everything to you guys, yeah, so right. but there yeah. are people we, writing we in. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 that are requesting multiple meetings, scoping meetings. Yeah. We used to look at those and it's just like, <laughs> I so many of them. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
You didn't know what you were signing up for then. Huh? I know, right? <laughs> 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 Problem uh -huh. is if you get behind, you know, if you miss like a couple of days and there's like a hundred of them, yeah. forget it. <laughs> All right, so what, it, what I'm thinking is, is we need to start thinking about what are the key topics we want to bring up at a scoping meeting if we're, if we're across the mm -hmm. table from FERC. And uh, so what I would like to do is address that at our next meeting ideas on what, so that way we have enough time to start to develop ex exactly what it is we want to say. Sound like a plan? Mm -hmm. All right. If you have some ideas beforehand, feel free to email them to the group, but let's not have an exchange over email. Let's save that for the public meeting. Okay. Make sense? Uh, so I will start forwarding stuff out. I hadn't gotten to the website to do some of the updates that I wanted to stress to people that they should participate. There is a note under on the front page if you scroll down that points you to the town website and NRPC website if you want to learn more <coughs> about the pipeline. But, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll make things a little bit more obvious. At some point in the next few months we should be thinking about our website and whether it's working for us the way we want it to be or not. It's, it's been up for three years now, so. There's a couple of things that are a little odd. Yeah. Yeah, so. so those, those emails were about today. I was trying to fix something. Okay. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wendy when had to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyone have anything else uh, in particular? When it comes to the pipeline, I do have a f some updates from Jeff, and I'll cover them a little bit later on to other business. Um, has there been any update on the survey letter that anyone surveyed? That has, they kicked it, they sent it back with some suggested changes, and we sent it back with our, uh, with our suggested changes. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because because no one's they asked didn't, us. They to. didn't want us. They didn't. They, one of the things that they said they didn't want to do is they didn't want to have to have somebody from the town accompany them. <laughs> and they did not. Want, they did not want them. Yeah. And you know, our, we told them that was unacceptable. Good. We're the property owner. We yeah. wouldn't be like anybody else that lived along that route. If their crews were out there, you'd be out there with them. Right. So you know, it's the same. That's the same piece. Though the other um, thing that they didn't want to do was to give us advance, to give us the look at what they were going to at their draft reports, and we figured that was so what they're going to we're going to get them anyway at one point or another, whether we see them in the in a draft form or or we see them when they're submitted, we're going to see them anyway, one way or the other. Yeah, we won't see the nitty gritties though if they just decide to tailor the draft or they decide to tailor well, it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I, I know what you're saying, but if they're going to, you know, agree to submit us the draft reports, they're probably not, they're probably going to go through them first anyways. Right, right. right. So it's not like we're going to get raw right. data. We're going to get prepared draft yeah. reports. Oh, yeah, whatever the, yeah, whatever, yeah, right, so exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah, but they're not gonna. They're not gonna sit there and commit ritual suicide on paper in front of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was curious Darn. to see if yeah, they. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I was curious to see when they thought they would start surveying. So. No indication of that. Okay. Yeah, because I would think they'd want to get out there. And not that. I mean, who's to say they haven't already strolled the area anyways? <laughs> but, so. Well. There was a back and forth between town hall and the police department about authorizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, based okay. on the activity that was going on West Air, mm -hmm. um, we just had a back and forth with the PD about the parameters and what we, were, you know, what they should be looking for or, or be aware of, and and uh, what the whatever. I won't say arrangements, but whatever we were told about what was going on or what we had proposed to them about what was going on. So, 
in terms of somebody accompanying him and those sorts of things. Right. So in case that sort of thing happens here, where they just show up, and don't forget, they're, they're contractors. Right. They don't get paid until they do the work, mm. okay? And they're very used to uh, doing something and asking forgiveness later, okay? Um, so, um, you know, we just used that as an opportunity to just to make sure that everybody was clear about what the situations were. Yeah, good. Okay. Anything else? No. All right. Uh, so that takes care of old business. Uh, new business. I uh, included in our in our packet uh, a little bit of information from the New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions and their upcoming training and things like that. Uh, I was curious if any of you have looked at any of the items under here and thought that you might like to go. I know Gage has an interest, and I know, Cindy, you expressed an interest in the one that's this week. That's the mitigating wetland losses in Nashua. Um, that, that's how much per person? That's, what, $25, I thought, or was it? I thought it said it was $50 per commission. commission. I believe it was, yeah. I was say, I think it was $50 per, per, per commission. Okay. So I, I, I can, I'll go back and find that because I have the. Yeah. So, Gage, you've registered for it, right? Yeah. Is anyone else registered for it? Is that something you'd like to attend? I think you know, just, <laughs> just so much going on. That's, you know. Like yeah. Third thing out, but. It's going to be a riveting session. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> really? <laughs> we're talking about wetlands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Probably will. So basically, it's going to cost us the same thing, right? If one of us goes versus all of us go. <coughs> as as my understanding like. that, yes. So it seems a shame not to go. <laughs> Just throw money away. So. And that's one of the issues that we're, we're, we seem to be facing a little bit more of, too. So. Yeah, that's good to... Yeah, I won't even be there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll probably sign up. You will? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, anyone have any complaints or issues with uh, with they, them signing up and the commission paying for that th th through our funds? All right? Yeah. Okay, so by consensus we agree? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, were there any others? Well, we have, of course, the big puddles in the woods coming up on Saturday. Yeah, I, I've, <laughs> I have not spoken to uh, to Emily uh, this week. She has, had not had a lot of interest in it uh, last week, so I'm hoping we're going to be able to get a couple of fires up and get some more, get some interest in it. Uh, I know that they've been out to school. I've got the information to Matt. Um, Trevor and all, and he, he did get it out to the school the, so the teachers, the biology teachers and the science teachers have it. Uh, I, but again, I have not heard from Emily uh, this week regarding sign up, so right. I'm not sure where it stands. Right, because I, I didn't want to sign up and in, in, in lock a, sp a slot for someone who could benefit as well. Well, so. we, have, we have the ability to, to run a second one later that week. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeff has already agreed to it. Uh, and he just want, he's just going to put the day aside, and then if it doesn't go, then he's going to do field assessments. So, yeah. um, you know, if you if you have the ability to sign up, great. If not, the 29th, I think that that is a Friday, I believe. Is that right? Sound right? No, mm -hmm. the 25th is so Saturday. I mean, uh, the uh, Thursday or something like that. Something in the Wednesday. Wednesday in the day. Okay. Is the second one, yeah. All right. The the other one on the list that caught my attention, but I haven't really looked at the details, was the one in Concord on the 26th of June, which is the wetland assessment. assessment. Mm -hmm. That's the one that interests me more than the one that's coming up this Thursday. I, I think we need to be able to do our own assessments of wetlands because we start doing more projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the one that yep, caught my eye. That one is that one's very interesting too, also. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the one that I was thinking of signing up for. Um, 
So if anyone, if no one has any objections, I think I was going to do that. So just need to confirm that in my calendar. Yeah, I, I'm. I got a couple of dates that are that that may conflict with. So, but I would like to. Uh, Does that interest anyone else? Yeah, oh, I, possibly. Mm -hmm. I don't know yet. Okay. Is that at the society in Concord? Or where's I don't recall. I looked at it early on when they just mentioned it, so. All right. Um, so, payment for Thursday. Did you, you, you said that you were bringing a I check? I said I would bring a check. Yeah, I'm not sure I can. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get that. I, I, don't so think, I, I don't think I can process a check through town. <laughs> so I will, uh, I'll, I'll get with Emily and see what, uh, I'll get what, see what we can, see what we can do. Okay. I'll ask her questions. All right. Yeah. Because we're, we're supposed to bring the registration and, and the check to, together. So, we'll. find out all right yeah let me know because I mean I can write a check yes yeah, so worst comes the worst I can I can all this is not gonna hurt me at this point so. Amber, so. we don't have to decide on all these classes nope now right nope all right okay anything else on this item all right moving right along so uh, other business, uh, our beaver management and water control activities and GZA update. Um, so we have turned over uh, the comments to GZA <coughs> and uh, Tracy and I have been back and forth on them, uh, a couple items and where she's moving forward and in incorporating the comments and, and going to have a, uh, you know, a first draft plan to us. Um, that we should that you know it's intending that that will be the the final unless we have some real you know we we'll find some real problems with it uh, <coughs> so that's that's going forward uh, we do have uh, some as we said we've had we have some some money left in the contract not a lot but there's some money left in the contract we have a couple alternatives just how we want to use that so I don't know if you want to go into that now or yeah okay so um, there's as I said, there's, there's a few hours left in the contract. Um, and originally, we were intending that uh, GZA monitor the installation of the sites, of our 10 sites. Um, the, they did the three sites uh, last fall. It, you know, other than standing there and watching you know, and, and, and Tracy was glad she did it because she'd never seen these go in. So she, it was a good learning experience for GZA. We got some great pictures, and uh, the town, we were able to have our some of our town employees there with them and learn how to put these in and, and create them and put them in. So that worked out well. Uh, watching the rest of these go in, GZA is like, you know, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> if you'd like, we'll do it. But um, if there's some other places that we'd rather there spend the money, uh, we were looking originally for some, like an information sheet on the beavers and things like that that we could use for educational purposes, things like that, that she's like, you know, we can spend the time making that instead, which is something that, uh, you know, would be a better, to mm -hmm. me, a better use of their time and, and better use of our money uh, for something like that. So um, there's a couple different items. There's 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 that. There's uh, some invasives work that they found. Uh, they obviously weren't focusing on that when they did the when they did the site uh, watches. But uh, she can spend some time doing a little bit more invasive work, getting getting us some list of some information, uh, things like that. So it's kind of up to us how we want to spend the rest of that money. If we want, as I said, we want to put it into the the installation we can or we can find something else that's along the same lines of work that they've already done that we can we can have them work on so the yeah. invasive work sounds interesting I mean. yeah I mean there's not there's 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 some money left there's not a lot so I mean they're not they're not going to go out there and resurvey all the areas yeah. so you know they'll they'll go through and be able to kind of generate some lists and here's what we found at these areas 
look at the flow of the water and say, okay, you know, obviously these are the potential areas where it may have, may have originated or where you may still have some other issues that we didn't see. So, I mean, there's some, some guesswork that they could do uh, and, and some actual, you know, based on some of their field survey, they can draw conclusions from. But uh, some of that's already in the plan already, uh, you know, as far as listing as to what area, what, you know, what limited invas invasives they saw in what areas. So it might be just as easy for us to pull that out and, and generate our own list. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I think th things that we can use to help educate the public yeah. about beavers and our control devices would be really interesting. Okay. Because uh, as Gage said, there's only a f you know, few hundred dollars left, right? Right. There's not, there's not, uh, it's not like there's a huge chunk of contract left. There's just the remainder of work, the work that we're going to do with it. Like so, so what did we settle with the GIS stuff? Uh, so we we've got to get with Matt. Did you did you get the dates? There was a couple of dates coming up. I did not get the dates, okay. um, but they um, were they were talking about having a monthly meeting at least for a while. Yep. And the next one was going to get down to more specifics with each department meeting. This was just like like a general meeting to get started. They had last time. So I don't think initially we were really on the, in the group. Right. That's like the impression I think I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you know Mike and Tracy were able to attend, and mm -hmm. I think we kind of put a little bit of stake in the sand, saying, "Okay, yeah, we're 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 part of this too." So I think that worked out well. They were very receptive to yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They were like, "Fine. Yeah, we're good to have you." you know? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think they, I don't think we were being excluded. I was just like, "Oh, oh, yeah, okay, sure." You know, we didn't really just didn't think of that. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it worked out well. Tracy was uh, was very. very thought it, was, it went very well and she she said sent some notes I can forward them along but um, you know my, as I said Mike was there so. so so do we need her to support us any more on that or is that something that we can carry the torch for ourselves at this point the you GI, with the GIS yeah I mean if, you, if you're depending on me to go to the uh, each all these meetings and the, the gathered information I'm, I mean I'd be at the meetings but I'm, go, I'm more learning yeah. about it when I go <laughs> you know I'm not the technical person on on this committee um, but I'm, I'll gladly learn about them at the meetings and, and go um, yeah yeah I, but I, you know you probably want someone who knows more about it like you know I, I got the impression from from Tracy's summation at the end that, that the what's going to be important is determining who puts the data in mm -hmm. and, and specifying you know, what what department does that, or, or who does it for what department? Um, <clears throat> part of our plan is going to have a, an assessment sheet in it, so that's going to be. She's going to make sure that's kind of in line with the questions that that we're proposing to put in our section of the database. So when we make uh, or whoever makes an assessment of a space for activity, whether you know whatever wildlife animals are going on. That's that data can be correlated into our GIS system. If that needs to happen by one of us, or if it can happen downstairs in, in staff somehow, um, that that's going to be what's important is the training for that person and the access to that person. It looks like we're going to have to go to a per seat license. So I guess that's some of the things that they're you know still going to meet on now to try to figure out how that you know how, how are we licensing this. Okay. There's still some. There's still a lot off in the air as to. They definitely wanted to go the more users. Right. Yeah, like 50 users with for $10,000, they were they were pretty much leaning that way. Mm -hmm. And we, we could be one of those, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah my concern is that it's going to fall on one of us volunteers to input the data. Yeah. I don't think that's, yeah, I don't think that that should happen. So, but we'll have to work that with our, with Tim Thompson and or whoever the appropriate person would be once we know more about it so yeah. I'm assuming someone from Tim's office is involved is yeah. Tim, was Tim Thompson yeah. himself there or does he have did he have the planner there or, he, um, or um, I believe Tim was there okay and no the I don't know if the, if the planner was there or not okay. I don't know all right. these people right right okay um, all right that's all I can tell you all right well, I would certainly love to have you continue to participate and let us know when we need to to, to chime in or, or what we need to yeah. do. And I'll uh, 
I don't know. I'll find that out what the next sense. meeting is. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if they if they said when the next meeting was, but neither one of us recorded it for some reason, you know. Okay. Casey or I. I don't think I don't think there was a date yet. Yeah, it was going to so. be in like a month type right. of thing. So. Yeah, you may want to get with Adam or Kyle, I, whoever, and, and make I, the connection. I, yeah, Adam, I'll, I, I've got Adam, I got to get with Adam on a couple other things anyway, so I can yeah, send him an email. I'll certainly them. attend if I can. Okay. All right. Uh, just so you know, today we heard from Wastewater about a uh, concern they have with one of the areas that we've already identified, and mm -hmm. Gage is going to follow up with them and, and let them know what we decided when we were all here with Adam and other folks here and see where that goes. So because we certainly want them to start adopting the, the methods that we spoke about, the control devices and stuff like that. So we, we seem to be having good luck with our devices. Yeah, I, I mean, we've got, we've got a couple of them in, and, and uh, as I said, we've walked, uh, walked two of them, and yeah, still water going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the, one at the one on Natticook is, I believe, operating properly. Yeah. I haven't seen any clogs on it. I yeah, do drive I by it a couple of times a week. So yeah, I try to check it every time I go by to see if yeah. there's any changes to it, and I haven't seen any. Yeah, yeah. There's been no water rising to the street level like we'd seen in some winter, in some yeah. springs. And so. the bridge downstream yeah. from that device didn't get washed out this year. Okay. I don't know if that's coincidence in how the snow melt happened this year, mm -hmm. or the fact that that device mm -hmm. kept it steady and there wasn't a big surge. Yeah. But okay. There was a nice gradual snow melt this year. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. real lucky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I know the one at Meadowbrook Pond, you know, down over uh, by Mayflower and stuff like that. I went over and looked at it, and it seems to be operating very well. The water yeah. level seems to be well controlled. It's flowing, which is good as for everybody involved because usually spring is the worst time. Right. So. Um, Especially with the ground being as saturated as it is. Mm. So. And the same same holds true for Mitchell Woods. The uh, the outlet is seemingly staying very, mm -hmm. you know, very stagnant level-wise. It's not fluctuating a lot. We're still seeing some some rise and rise and fall in the stream, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it levels back out fairly quickly. So okay. the the, you know, the swamp is not saturated. So can I get back to the GIS for a minute? Yes. I know at the right at the next meeting they're going to want the individual needs of the departments. So it's something think about like what you know what like we want to put a layer for the, the beavers we want to be able to go out and you know here's where our bridges are and this is you know the trails and you know so they I think they're gonna yeah and they evaluate the kind of needs that we want okay it'd be good to be able to get our trail systems into the system And then we could start putting in all our scout projects and all these things could be getting in there. Um, so, so, yeah. Um, we did get our maintenance agreement, I, I believe, a contract in place for the gentleman who took who, who installed the devices. Okay. To, I think I'm looking at you. To I, I've not. I've not heard. Okay. It was it was supposed to go in and, and we because yeah. we agreed to it. I right. not heard one way or the other that we that we did or didn't. So, All right. Do you want do you want me to follow up on that or do you? Want um, was that was was that happening outside of GSA, GZA? They weren't. Well, oh, they weren't. They they gathered the quotes for us, but I don't think right. they really were any part of. I don't think they were part of putting the contract. Yeah, that was something that we just went with. Uh, we went straight to. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can follow up on that. Okay. Yeah, because I'd be curious to see what his impressions are of, of the winter. Right. When he does his first maintenance, you know, if it, especially if there's something that we should be considering doing that we're not doing or whatever. So. Okay. Uh, anything else on beaver management and water control activities? Right, so that takes us next to our vernal pool party, which we spoke about just a moment ago. That's coming up this Saturday. If anyone is interested, it's happening at the Merrimack Middle School. Uh, feel free to contact us if you want more information. Yep. Um, so that takes us to another item, the next item down. Uh, this spring, 
If you've walked any of our properties, you will have noticed that there seems to be an excessive amount of dog feces along the trails in all three of our major parcels. Uh, if you're watching this meeting, it is against town code for you to not pick up after your animal. Uh, so when you're walking with your animal on, on our properties or any town parcels or anywhere off your own property, you should be bringing appropriate mechanisms to collect your dog feces. Please do. I'm thinking if it doesn't get better, we might have to be more proactive. Cause it's pretty bad. Yeah. Is, it, is it posted on the uh, kiosks? Yeah, I, it, some of them have been. I know, I know the Wildcat Falls one is the, yeah. No. Yeah. In a long line, uh, of all the things, I don't think we should have to post. For God's sakes, right. you know, you don't, you don't, you, you, it's the middle of a path. People walking it, pick up after it. Yeah. Throw it in the woods, get a stick or something, get it, I mean, really. Yeah, I mean, it really should be picked up and removed. Yeah. Because cause some people might end up throwing it into wetland areas and stuff like that, and that just creates its own host of issues, so. Yeah, we have no idea if the, any of these animals are on medications of any forms or anything like that as well. So the idea is you should be picking up after your animal, not just trying to conveniently toss it into the woods three feet off the trail. So uh, I know it's harder in winter because people think that the snow covers it and it's not seen, but when the snow all melts, it's all of a sudden it looks like a real mess. It's like it is. Like it's it's gross. Yeah. It's gross. Yeah. Really is, you know. Get it while it's frozen. Get it out of there, you know. <laughs> or get it while it's hot and get it out. Of there. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Yeah, I, mean, I saw an article. I think it was in the Union Leader, or maybe it was the Cabinet Press, or whatever, about a whole conservation property to the northwest of here where they had to have a, a dog cleanup day, and a bunch of volunteers went in with bags and scoopers to clean them, clean it all up. So it's not unique to New to Merrimack, uh, but it is. The law of the land. You can be fined. Follow the law of the land. Very simple. So, so in some of the trails we posted is closed, and people were still going in mm. just to have their dog go. Yeah. And they weren't going in with their dog. They were just, you know, kind of letting their dog go, and then come on, let's go and taking the dog. And I had explained to a couple of folks that no. It's not, this isn't your dog's right. private latrine. Right. This is, uh, throw it in the car. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, is, this is trail right. that, that the town's, you know, for the, everybody in the town, not just their dogs to go and relieve themselves. Yeah, I, I don't think we spent $4 million on Horse Hill to have a place for dogs to go the, to yeah. the bathroom. Okay. So, so, sorry, I just figured it was well worth bringing up in a meeting and putting it on the agenda so people know that we're watching so all right okay so uh, <laughs> Jeff is moving forward with his work uh, he's he's engaged a number of smart people to help him get it done uh, kind of like he spoke about uh, I did process a work change order I stayed within the limits, that the bounds that you gave me when you voted to approve the contract. <coughs> uh, Jeff is going to hire a, another intern to help him this summer uh, to do the general work, plus to help with the fact that we're um, doing our turtle study. So, uh, so a few more eyes and ears and stuff like that. So, he's also got, like I said, a few other smart people involved. I think he, I think Laura Deming is one of the folks that he's got involved. Uh, and some other people that he's made already made contact with. So, is he going to give <coughs> you the invoice for the transcendence? He did. Okay, so that's yep. all squared away. Right. Okay. So I did get the invoice for the transmitters or whatever there, uh, for the. It turned out to be thirty dollars more than the seven hundred ninety-eight dollars that we approved. I uh, submitted it at eight hundred and twenty-six roughly dollars, and that's going through. So. Uh, that um, beyond that, I, I believe he's wanting to get out there. He has done some work out there already. He told me that uh, some of the folks that have been walking Horse Hill have uh, for forwarded to uh, subcommittee members some sightings of various critters. And I've been forwarding those to Jeff. Jeff has confirmed a couple of them, not all of them. 
Uh, there's been certain turtle species and snake species found that are of interest. So, uh, so I've been forwarding that, and he has noticed some of that stuff. He's most interested in, in checking out and listening and capturing the peepers that are out there because that will give us a good idea of what's going on. And I have a pond in my yard, and I'll tell you, it's They're extremely loud. loud this time of year. So yeah, I'm just glad that it's not so warm that I'm tempted to open the windows right now. You know, my mother, my wife told my daughter when she was about four that when you hear the peepee toads, it's time to go barefoot, and she did. <laughs> it was like March. <laughs> So, uh, <clears throat> but yes, I have quite a few critters and stuff. Seen a lot of deer lately around my house. I'm sure that they're getting out and about now. So, uh, so, so he's moving forward. So, and I'm glad to see that he's been able to en to enlist other help. Uh, so, there was a question about bats that came up as well over the past week, as to whether they could exist or do exist out there and. ACOM may actually have to do a bat study. There's so, so m uh, far fewer bats than there used to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Far fewer. Yeah. I haven't seen them anymore. Well, that's that's why they were a particular concern. Yeah, I used to see I used to see them flying around in my yard a lot. Yeah, you know, at dusk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so. now hardly ever. Yeah. So, so who knows what happens out of that? So, so that's my update so far. When it comes to that, a uh, couple of other items that came up that aren't on the agenda. <clears throat> Seedling giveaway. Did you get the email from Sue? Yes. So we're, we are on target we're, for we're still on May the 9th, May right? May the 9th, yeah. We're okay. I'm going to, uh, actually, that's a good point. I may uh, try and get from Eber the if, if he spent anything last year, he said he was going to put it in the paper, and he did. I don't know if he spent any, I don't know what the cost was for that. So I don't think it's going to, I don't think it would be very much to put an ad in the paper, but I, I still need to get from, I guess, from Eber how much he spent. So I don't know okay. if we've ever. You could uh, post on the patch for nothing. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of venues that we're going to post on that's for free, which is fine, but he also put it in a couple papers. He put it in the you know the bulletin and the <laughs> local local paper for the telegraph. Uh, but I just don't know what it cost. Okay. Can you update our calendar? Yes. Since you know how to do that. It's uh, it's on there. <laughs> it is? Okay. It should be on there. All right, I d I don't recall. I just think so I'm having some trouble trying to have flyers. You know, I'd like to be able to click on so you can bring it up and then bring up the flyer, but yeah. I haven't figured that out yet. Okay. So I got a note from Peter Flood in the Rotary about our kiosk that we now have. This is the kiosk down by the down by the pavilion in Watson Park. Have any of you gone down to look at the kiosk? Mm -hmm. I went down to look at it a long time ago. Yep. Put that up. So so what I'd like to do is schedule for our, our next meeting unless we have a very busy meeting is a discussion about what kind of content we want to add to the kiosk. So if you get a chance and you're by Watson Park, please take a stop, yeah. take a look. I snapped a few pictures of it. I don't, don't have them. Uh, uh, I have them on the phone still. So, uh, but I'd like to include kiosk discussion at our next meeting. Um, also, the um, Amherst Conservation Commission on May the 2nd is doing a, uh, a discussion about the mustard weed. Did I say that right? Did I forward that flyer to all of you? Gar garlic, garlic mustard. Garlic mustard, yeah. So, so if you're interested in that. Also, in Londonderry, there's a discussion about the, the cottontail rabbit mm -hmm. at, um, what's the name, Mas Musquash? Musquash, yeah, the Musquash Reservation. So... Yeah, they're so. actually going to take you out to where they put in habitat. I'm not sure how many years ago. Unfortunately, I have a. I already have something scheduled, so I can't go. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So those are items. So the uh, last thing is, is we all got an email about the cut on Atherton Road. I don't know if you want to discuss that at all. Um, 
so I just wanted to bring that up. So, has, any, has anyone got my? Has anyone seen it? I have. I. What's it? Well, I looked at it. It's like okay, you know. It looks like a selective cut, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like they cut a landing and then yep. went and cut trees and. And they cut the landing. the The original report was that it was over four hundred feet long. It's only a hundred by thirty. Yeah, I, um, you know, and the reason I suggested that we hire the forester to go out and look at it is because of the proximity to the other houses there, for one, uh, and two, now that I've gone and really had a look at it, you know, there was a lot of stuff that should have been taken out of there anyway, and we don't, you know, the town doesn't do the doesn't is not quite as diligent as you guys are in terms of thinning out stuff to uh, make it a better so that the, the place you know can support more more things so the guy's not done the lumbers off almost all the lumbers off it mm -hmm. um, and um, my understanding is he's gonna grade and seed the landing so that it'll grow back Yeah, I, I saw it on Saturday. I noticed some areas where there still needed to be some more branch cleanup and stuff like that. I don't know if that's being handled or not. So they've done a. L I know they've done quite. Based a bit. on what I saw Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they've done a fair amount of cleanup in terms of branches and stuff. And he was supposed to get that stuff out of there and 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 chip that. So I don't know if he's doing it. I don't. I haven't seen the contracts. So I don't know right. the scope of work. Yeah. So, you know, but anyway. Yeah, I I noticed a few big trees were taken which within what I would have thought was the no disturb buffer around the wet area. But but that's nothing was clearly marked, so there's no way to to know what the de de delineated line really is. So, but in my opinion, there was a few trees that got a little close. I would have preferred they would have stayed, but so yeah, I, I don't know how they did the cut either. I mean, were they actually were they in there with a shear or? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. I talked to one of the neighbors. They came in and grabbed it and cut it off and dropped them and right. Grabbed, so I mean, cut they, and they could have been, you know, uh, yeah. back to your within, within that reach. buffer. I mean, mm -hmm. if they're if the machine wasn't in the buffer, right? You know, it's kind of. Well, that's true. I mean, I'm not worried about yeah. the machine in the buffer. I'm just thinking it's, it's a no disturb it's buffer, a, no disturb, yeah. which means you don't even take the tree. Right. So. And, and we're only talking about five trees, I think. So. Okay. No, I, no, I mean, I didn't really. Look, yeah. It was not alarming. So. I, I think from some of the things that I, that I saw, uh, there were posts on Facebook and things like that. Uh, I think there is a, probably an education we should do next time when we talk about what a selective cut is, and the town should consider doing that. I think there was a different expectation uh, between. You know what some people thought a selective cut was, but what I saw out there and I, the stumps that were left behind and looking at the trees that are there it looked like a typical mm -hmm. selective cut forestry operation that we've done through the commission. Mm -hmm. I think I think when it came to picking the trees and what was left, it looks pretty typical of what we've seen before. So I don't. I, I, so uh, again, I think w what it really comes down to is the fact that people had a different perception of what a selective cut really was. So. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if you remember, you know, if you were here or not, but uh, when we first finished the Gateway Trail, uh, it, it, that was, people were angry. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd ruined the woods. We, you know, it, it's awful. It's never going to, it's never going to come back. We've, you know, altered the species. And, okay. Yeah. You look yes. at it now. So it's coming back nicely. No, but you it's look at it now. We, we've already had to recut the road. A I couple mean, of things that maybe could have been done a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but we, we, we went in there, we, we tried to make a couple openings, and we did. We were successful, and we, we've, got, we've got more raptors up there now than we've ever had. We've got a larger deer herd that's, that's healthier. I mean, there's not, yeah. you know, there's not a really a lot of downside to, to what happened up there. I mean, it's, you can see into the woods. People are, we've got more people up in, in the woods now using it. Mm -hmm. More dogs, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, just, it's, I think it's, people are just... You know, they, they think of it as their own little chunk, and so guess what? It's 
It's everybody's. Yeah, again, I think it's just an education. Yep. You know, this is what's going to happen. This is, this is what it's going to look like. That's why when we were thinking of the next cut at Greater Woods, we brought Dan and Mike in to speak to the subcommittee so the subcommittee could see pictures of yep. this is what it's going to look like when it's done. This is what it's going to look like five years later. Right. And uh, I know uh, around Wildcat Falls, uh, Andy and, and John Diggins went around and spoke to all the neighbors and said it's going to happen. And even after that, some of the neighbors were quite concerned about what happened yeah. because, again, it's perceptions and people's thoughts and ideas. But if you go out there now, you'll see that it's considerably better than it was in the first couple of months. So, yeah, so I, I think it's just an education thing. So, uh, so that's my thoughts. All right. Uh, anyone else have anything under other business? Okay, so that takes us to minutes. Uh, first minutes are March the 16th. Folks get a chance to take a look at them. So. Um, move the minutes with corrections. Second. Okay. Seconded by Gage. Uh, I'll walk through starting with page one. So page one, line. Now these are my notes from the first time they were printed, so hopefully the lines are the same. Uh, <laughs> line 51. Uh, Heart Cross it only has one S at the end of it. On. That's all I have on page one. Page two, uh, line eight, uh, he spoke of the town being awarded $500,000 grant to complete the trail. Uh, that was you, Tom. I'm not, yes. was, that the, was that the right number? Yes. Okay, all right. All right, and then I'm going to skip ahead unless anyone else has anything else. Um, only minor stuff. Um, Well, I'm stopping on, line, on page six, and I'm trying to remember what I had for notes from a few weeks ago. Oh, I see. Well, that's just a note that says that's where I, I had stopped on the first time. So let's take us to page seven. Uh, question for you, Gage, on line 31 on page seven. It says, Commissioner Perry questioned where the pressure stations would be located. Did you say pressure or did you say com compressor? Oh, I thought it was saying pumping maybe, but I probably compressor station is probably better. And that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, because that is that's there's only one, and that's got to be in Mason, so that's probably got that's got to be what I said. So all right, so pressure should be Com compressor. compressor. Right. Okay. Uh, I noticed on page eight between lines nine and ten, there probably should be another blank line. Just a formatting thing. And uh, that's all I have. Um, page three. Yep. Line 53. Um, you could be signed contracts. Well, he did, he did give me multiple copies of the same contract. Just contact. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's con contacts. Oh, it's contacts. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. So yes, contacts sorry. should be contracts. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. And, it, and it's also in line 59, except the contract as presented. Ah. Okay. Good catch. Uh, I missed that one completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and twice. Yeah. Even, <laughs> even in bold. <laughs> and in line 56, um, the town manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I get so caught up just reading it. I miss. I. I just don't even see the stack this time. Oh, I know. <laughs> um. And um, on page five. Line 47. I don't know if, if it was said or not, but was should that be not associated with the pipeline right of way? Can you talk about it? 
below. So I was, I was just kind of confused on that. No, actually, I think he was referring to the um, right to the to the Eversource right away. Oh, okay. Okay. Which you know used to be PSNH. Right now, okay. okay. Anyone have anything else for March no. May 16th? All those in favor as amended signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That carries 600. Right, so that takes us to April the 6th. Uh, I'll move with amend, uh, yeah, updates. Second. Seconded by Gage. Uh, so this comes up in a couple of different places, uh, but uh, if you look on page one, line 20, uh, Earl Sandford, that's proper, president of Sandford Surveying, so that needs to be a D. And I think San and Sand shows up in a few different places, um, notably again on page two, line 44 as well. So we probably want to scan the document and get that right everywhere, so. Uh, I have a question on page 5, um, line 38, refers to representatives of the Amherst Council. This is, I, Tom, you were relaying how um, Eileen had stopped going to the town administrator meetings, and then I think you mentioned that the that the town council met or members of the town council met with the did you mean Amherst selectmen did you say Amherst selectmen or did you say Amherst council no there were two uh, there were two selectmen that we met with okay right, so you met with representatives of the Amherst select board yes okay so we'll change 38 council to be select board then And uh, that's all I have. Anyone have anything for April the 6th? Nope. All right then, so all those in favor as amended signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions? We have one abstention, Matt, so that passes 501. All right, so that takes care of minutes. Uh, public has left. Uh, commissioner comments. Cindy? Um, I did hear back about whether, you know, they thought there was any good in Stern Cottontail in Horse Hill, and she said she didn't think so, but they would be, if she could put me in touch with someone if we were interested in creating habitat. And I said I would ask. I mean, my feeling, obviously, what shouldn't do anything until we know what's going to happen with the pipeline. Right. Um, so, but thought I'd bring it back. And she did what she didn't know about anything on Back River Road. So maybe is, this, is that snowshoe or is that different? Yeah. Is that snowshoe here? No. Road? No, that was cottontail. Cotton, cottontail yeah. habitat. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It says it right. It says it right on the. Really. It I'll says it right up on. The I haven't made it over there yet, so yeah, I'll have to go board. over there and I'll yeah. take a picture or something. And. Where's that? Back That's River Road. Yeah, it's Dumpling... Uh, Dumpling Brook. Dumpling Brook. Brook. Yeah. Dumpling, yeah, something or other. So there's a sign right past Norm's transmission on that side of the road. Okay. So. Maybe they're getting confused with Merrimack County or something. You know, there's different, uh, yeah. but... Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. Right. I, That's all I had. I also researched it was December of 2012 that they wanted to come talk to us, but never did. Oh, okay. So, but... Hmm. Matt? Just want to remind folks that tomorrow at 6:30 p.m. downstairs, we have a Greater Woods uh, meeting um, where we plan to finalize the Greater Woods brochure. So okay, 
And is that the brochure that we're going to use with the police, or is that? Yes. It is, okay. And, and to other. possibly be posted in the kiosk yeah. because it's going to have an informational map. And yeah. Okay. Great. So should I agenda a discussion about what we want to do with the police at our next meeting? I think, yeah, I think we'll be ready okay. as a subcommittee anyway. All right. So we'll probably want to meet ourselves first and then, and then see if we can meet with the chief at our second meeting in May? Does that make sense? <coughs> Likely, you know, with, with, with how the trails, how quickly the trails are drying out, um, I think uh, the sooner the better now. It's almost like we thought we had all this time and now we... I don't think the frost got as deep as we, we thought. Yeah. Okay. Do we still have signs up? We do. We the the trails closed. Signs are still up. Um, I was slightly alarmed at how they were bypassed <laughs> with a lot of. Uh, they were completely ignored for the most part. So that's uh, a little bit concerning. But we're the Conservation Commission. We're not the police right. that, that are posting it. But uh, you think people would at least take notice and, but no. No. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Matt? No. Gage? Nope. Nothing. Okay. Tom? Yeah. Adam uh, is leaving. Oh. He's going to take over the DVW director in Costown. Oh, good for him. Yes, absolutely. So. That's too bad. Yep. D do you know when? No. Okay. No, I'm presuming probably the end of the month or so. Mm -hmm. So, I, but other than that, I, I don't know. I just, I was just told that he had submitted his resignation last week. I see. And he was taking over and taking over the job in, in Goffstown. Mm -hmm. Just. A nice plum for him. Yeah. You know, it's a nice, good sized department. It's a fairly complex department. Uh, you know, it's much, uh, if you've ever been over to their uh, solid waste disposal site, it's a very sophisticated site. So mm -hmm. they've done a lot of good. The, I know the public, the, the current director over there, and I used to do a lot of work together. So, you know, okay. but anyway. Yeah, yeah, good. And we will be reorganizing on Thursday. The council will be. So mm -hmm. I don't know whether I will be returning or not. Okay. Okay. Because um, Tom Koenig has expressed a desire to maybe not continue with the planning board. And I told him I'd pick it up if he, if that was his desire. So mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. We'll have to see. All right. Do you know if there's going to be an interim? You know, in place of Adams position for a period of time or I don't know I haven't I uh, imagine you know I haven't I haven't talked to the manager about that if there's going to be somebody in between but it's going to take us a couple of months or more to to probably fill that slot right. when, when you found out can you let us know via email sure yeah thanks yeah, because we do do a lot of work with him. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, I mean, he's been a he's right. been a great guy to work with. He's taken a lot of things in consideration, and you know, he listens to people, and you know, he listens to his crew, and you know, he's a you know, he's done he's done a damn good job. Yeah, I think so. Right. When they're that good, and the opportunity strikes, they go. Yeah. So in a way, you know, yeah. people go, "Oh my God!" Well, it sort of validates your original decision, doesn't it? Right. Did yeah, you hired exactly. the right guy. Yeah. Huh? Don't you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't have the spot for him to move up to, so. All right, anything else, Tom? No, no. Okay. Mike? No. All right. I think I'm done. Second. <laughs> Moved by Cindy, seconded by Tom. All those in fa favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, that passes 600, and it is now. 8.30 p.m.